Okay, uh, I believe y'all just got through talking to Tim Hudson. I just want to congratulate Tim, um, you know, being a part of our baseball program. That's a really big deal, not just for our baseball program, but for Auburn. I think it's a real special, real special deal. He's a great addition. i also like to congratulate Bruce Pearl on a big win last night uh, in a very tough place uh, to play. And then, of course, I got an opportunity to be there Saturday. And I've been at Auburn a long time, and uh, yeah, that was one of the best, if not the best, uh, basketball environment since I've been here. It was really unbelievable with game day being here and then the pressure that goes with that to play a big team like Kentucky and then play a great game and win. That's really something. So hats off to Bruce Pearl, his staff, uh, basketball team. Uh, very special um, day. Uh, we signed three players today uh, to add to a class that I feel like is one of the best classes we've had since I've been here. Uh, starting out with uh, a tight end, Brandon Frazier. He's got a 3.67 GPA, uh, 6'7", 250. Uh, this guy can really um, do some things after he catches the ball. Uh, very athletic. I think he was the player of their, of their conference uh, last year in basketball. A guy that was committed to Coach Morris for a long time, and then of course came here and real excited about what he can do, you know, with his physical attributes. Um, a defensive lineman, Dre Butler, a junior college player, really feel like we needed some, you know, guys that had experience, you know, losing the guys that we had. And Dre is a guy that was a big time basketball player in high school itself, um, you know, one of the best uh, junior college players at any position. Uh, this year, just a wonderful person, uh, wonderful family. We're very excited about Dre and uh, getting him here. And of course, Marquise Burks, another junior college uh, player, uh, more of an internal guy. Really felt like uh, he's got big time athleticism, uh, very good athlete, um, you know, really gets after the quarterback. So we really think that he's got a chance to really help us. And then, of course, didn't get a chance to really talk about our defensive end, Jay Hardy, the last. Uh, Signing day, he actually signed, but he was trying to keep it quiet so he could have a celebration with his teammates today, and obviously it got out. But he is a wonderful player, wonderful person. Uh, he's also a basketball player, very athletic. Uh, team won a state championship. He had a lot to do with that. So we're very excited uh, to add him uh, to our guys. You know, we've signed 26. Um, and uh, we possibly could still take a grad transfer, you know, offensive lineman or corner. So we'll see where that goes with that. But just hats off to our staff. They did a wonderful job recruiting. Um, and then, of course, LaVon Harbin, uh, head of our recruiting. Uh, and LaVon and the rest of the staff just did a wonderful job. Uh, and not just the type of players, but even more important, the type of people they are. And this is a very high character class. I know I said that last time, but uh, very excited about that. Uh, a couple updates. Um, spring practice starts on March 16th. Uh, the spring game will be April 11th. I believe it's going to be at 3 p.m. Uh, the exciting thing uh, for me is we're going to be honoring our 2010 National Championship team that day. That's a 10-year reunion. Uh, very excited about that. We're also going to have a celebration at Toomer's Corner with our fans uh, as soon as the A-Day game is over. So that's going to be a real special time to get all those guys back. Um, you know, and it's kind of funny how, how time flies 10 years ago, and, and it goes really quick. So real excited about that. Uh, a couple uh, updates on players. Sean Shivers, uh, he will participate in spring football. Uh, last year he just ran track. He's at track now. He'll come back for spring practice, and then he'll actually start uh, running meets after spring practice. Anthony Swartz will do like he did last year. He's, he's full track full time with that. So we're excited to have Sean you know, going through uh, spring practice. Uh, another update, uh, just to confirm, Booby Whitlow has entered the transfer portal. Uh, he's looking for a fresh start somewhere else. Uh, we appreciate his time here. We wish him nothing but the best. Uh, and just overall, like I said, just uh, it's a very big day. Um, like I said, the first, I really believe this is one of the, the best classes that we've had uh, since I've been here. Uh, we, we needed some guys that could come in and help immediately. Uh, we did that with some junior college players, but at the same time, we feel like the majority of these freshmen can come in here and help us immediately with that. And obviously we have 10, 10 early enrollees that are off to a very good start. Uh, I know Coach Russell, obviously he has a high standard. And uh, just talking to him, he's very impressed with the guys' uh, work ethic, character, and everything that goes with that. So 
Um, and, and like I said uh, at Senior Bowl, very excited about Chad Morris being here. Uh, Chad's going to run the offense. Um, I'm very excited about uh, his leadership. I know our players are too. And uh, so really looking forward to gearing up, you know, for spring practice. Questions? Yes, what stands out most to you about the class as a whole? Um, the character. I mean, you know, if you remember the last signing day about the GPAs, over half this group is a three-point or higher. And uh, when you combine that with how good of players and how good of athletes they are, you know, I think that really says a lot. And, uh, you know, that's how we win here at Auburn, you know, with, 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 with talent, character, togetherness, team, and uh, really feel like, uh, you know, that's, that's what we signed. We worked extremely hard to do that. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, our coaches develop long-term relationships, not just a couple months, but, but years. And uh, so real excited about this group. And, and really, I feel like we met our needs too. I mean, we really, hey, we need to, the offensive line, the defensive line, obviously that stands out. But we also got some playmakers uh, on both sides in the secondary and, and uh, some very athletic guys. And then, you know, you heard me say a lot, this guy played basketball, big time basketball player too. And a lot of times, the athleticism, especially with big guys, you know, really means something. You, you mentioned uh, possible grad transfers, offensive tackle, corner. Um, what's the situation at corner? We uh, we are in the uh, we're we're looking for one also, and uh, we feel like we've got a, a real good plan already. I'm not ready to sit here and say what that is, but uh, we have thought through that very extensively. Losing Sipos obviously was. Uh, was was a big big surprise towards the end, but uh, we've got a plan, and uh, probably better off to say that at a later date. Just as far as Brandon Frazier goes, you know he had a relationship with, with Chad. Yeah. He's here now. He's an elite pass catching tight end. Yeah. Does this represent kind of a change for what you guys are going to be doing. Offensively? Yeah, you know. So I know it's been uh, you know a lot of people, a lot of our fan base say, when are we going to throw the tight end? Well, it, it, it's here. So the frustration of the not throwing the tight end enough. You know, I think we got two guys that can really help change and the guys we got. And then really, if you look at what Coach Morris did the last two years, I think they targeted the tight end either the most or second most in all of college football. And so that's really a big uh, priority for Coach Morris. And, uh, you know, Brandon knows that too. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I think the closest thing, you know, physically, C.J. Uzama is close to that size. He may be a little bigger you know, at this point and all that. But uh, he's got great range. And, of course, J.J. coming, you know, he provides a different aspect too. And uh, both of them are big-time basketball players. And both of them are big, strong guys and, you know, have those NFL-type bodies. So, uh, yeah, you, you'll, you'll definitely see more targets to the tight end than what we've seen in recent history, you know, with Chad, you know, running the offense. How do you feel about <coughs> Yeah, you know, I think that's a position that uh, we're very deep and we're very young and talented. And uh, so we feel feel very good about the guys that we have um, and uh, to fit into what Coach Morris wants to do. You know, the thing that uh, you'll see him doing a little bit more than what we've done is get our backs out of the backfield, um, you know, matching them up on linebackers and all that and the pass catch and everything that goes with that. So that'll be an emphasis of his in the spring also, but that is a position that uh, we have a lot of depth. We have a lot of very talented young men too. What is Mark Anthony's situation right now? Is he close to him? Yeah, yeah, I think he's close. Uh, I talked to Coach Russell the other day. You know, he's back in the, the, the mix with the regular group and everything that goes with that. And obviously we recruited him. I mean, you know, we recruited him for almost three years and really just think he's very versatile. You know, he's got receiver skills. Uh, he's gotten bigger. Um, and, you know, he, he's got uh, great quickness, too. So very excited to see what he can do, you know, once we get to spring. He'll be 100% well, we, we think so. Yeah, we, we, we feel like right now, uh, you know, everybody that we were expected to go through spring should should go through at this point. Kelly looked uh, like he was walking pretty well. The other day, obviously, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Sort of, what's the, the plan for him? Yeah, it, it is going well. Um, you know, we're really hoping that we get him – back rolling really good in, in summer. That, that's really our plan. And then, of course, the goal is by fall camp him, him being turned loose and ready to go. He won't be able to participate uh, during spring. But he's a smart young man, too, and he'll get a chance to, 
to really uh, understand what we're doing, but really hoping once we get to the summer, uh, he'll be cleared to do some things. And then fall camp, you know, we're hoping that uh, he'll get a chance to be cleared totally uh, to play. Who do you think uh, will start off working like that? Uh, you know, I'm not ready to say that right now. You know, we're going to let Chad evaluate everything that uh, we did last year. And, and then, of course, we'll have our, our uh, fist drills and everything that goes with it here in February. And, and then he'll put the pieces of the puzzle, you know, as we get closer to spring. Yes, you still got a spot on your staff to fill at this point. Yeah. You know, really, um, you know, we're going to wait until after today. That was my whole goal to begin with. And then, of course, we're hoping in the next few days that uh, that we can get that wrapped up. I'm not in a huge hurry, but by the time we get back, we're going to let, let our staff off for uh, a little extended time. It's been a long grind. You know, we had that bowl game, and we didn't have much time in between like we normally do. Came back. And then last year, we learned a lesson. I mean, you know, it seemed like every weekend during the spring is official visits. And uh, so I just want to make sure our, our staff done a very good job recruiting and uh, the year. So we're going to give them an extended time off and uh, come back refreshed here uh, next week at the end of next week and, and be ready to go. Well, uh, you know, I just hired, in my opinion, the best offensive coordinator in college football. And, you, you know, you get an opportunity to hire a guy like Chad Morris. And, you know, so, uh, I mean, I love calling plays. I mean, I've said that numerous times. But when you got a chance to hire Chad Morris, um, he, he's, he's not just good. He's special good, in my opinion. And, uh, man, I'm so excited he's here. And just he's already brought so much just positive energy. Um, you know, our, our players, uh, they're very excited. I'm very excited. And um, so looking forward to, to have him run our offense. And, I, and I'm really hoping it's for a long time. And uh, like I've said before, me and him have talked about this day, about us coaching together for a long time. And so when things went down like they did his previous job, you know, it worked out super. So uh, very excited about Chad. Gus, what will your role kind of be game planning and all those things? Yeah, you know, really what I'm planning on doing is probably uh, spending a little bit more of my time in special teams, um, you know, as far as that goes. But more than anything, uh, just the one-on-one -on -one relationships with our players uh, and, you know, being more of a, you know, uh, a part of everything, you know, just making sure that uh, from a head coach's standpoint and doing the things that, you know, a lot of head coaches in our league that don't call plays are able to do. But I think the big thing for me is just – the focus for me is more one-on-one -on -one time with individual players, and uh, that's really what I'm looking forward to the most. And uh, but like I said, I, I think right now, if you know, if I look at it from a big picture standpoint, I really feel like we got the best two coordinators in our league. And uh, you know, obviously with with Kevin and what he's done the last four years, top 20 uh, in scoring. I think there's only three teams, other teams in the country that have done that. And the stability, and of course, he just signed a three-year deal, which is very well deserved, and I'm very excited to have him as our defense coordinator. If you look, this will be his fifth year. Look around the league, see how many other defense coordinators, what year it is. So the stability there. And then you get a guy like Chad Morse that's going to take our offense, I really believe, the next level. And so right now, I mean, it's a very exciting time for me. Um, you know, I've been around here a long time. I've been fortunate enough to be here when we won big. And uh, I know what it feels like. And it feels real good right now. And so just uh, – you know, that positive energy that you have with, with excitement of not just the staff, but with players. And we lost some good players. I mean, I think everybody knows that. I mean, we lost some big-time players. But, uh, you know, our, our, our team and, and everything that goes with it, we're, we're fairly young. But uh, I really like the, uh, the chemistry we have right now, and I like the excitement. So, really looking forward to going this spring. What's that? What's your plan for yeah, we're still we're still working through that. Uh, I'm not ready to tell you today, but uh, you know he's a flexible guy. Uh, he's a flexible guy that could uh, that could could play a lot of different positions. So as it gets closer to spring, uh, I'll be a little bit more um, you know idea of exactly what we're going to do for sure. You've got to you've got to replace four guys on the offensive line, four starters. Yeah. What do you think about that group 
we're all going to be competing. Yeah. Well, there's going to be some good competition. Um, you know, there's some young guys coming in last year that redshirted that we think are going to be really good players. We have those veteran guys have been our twos the last two years. They've gotten a lot of quality reps in practice and all that. They're going to have a chance. Uh, then obviously we've got the two junior college guys coming in. So I think there's going to be some good competition. I think it's really good timing to have a new line coach, a new coordinator, and uh, you know see who wins the job. But I think competition uh, will be a big key, and really looking forward to see how all that you know lines up. How big of a spring do you think it will be for Alex Jackson? I think it'll be a very good big spring, and you know you can see that, and not just him, but some of those guys have been behind the two and three year starters. You know, even in bowl practice, you've kind of seen more urgency. He's one of those guys, and, you know, he's an athletic guy. And uh, so really looking forward to seeing what he can do. But he's not the only one. I mean, there's – I'd say the rest of them, you can you can see the urgency, which that's normal. That should happen. And so far it has, but we'll, we'll see once we get in the spring. Talking about Chad taking kind of things to another level, what, where do you think he can make the most difference in kind of transforming the offense? You know, I think more than anything is just a fresh start fresh eyes um you know we're from the same family uh the foundation but you know he's different and uh, i know him and bo have already spent you know a lot of time together and cord and all that and just talking about the new things that we're going to do i know our receivers are, are excited about it and you know, i'd say there's a good chance we could throw it a little bit more than what we what we did last year and you know build around Bo's strengths and and all that, but I just, you know, I think more than anything, it's just the newness, uh, fresh eyes, fresh start, um, and a guy that has been ultra successful, you know, doing it. With the with the running backs now in that situation, do you, do you tell Tank, do you tell Mark Anthony, the guys that haven't played college ball, hey, you could be our starter if you come in and work on it? Well, there's open competition at every position, and like I said, the good thing is we have really talented young guys, and even the guys that are, that are coming back that you didn't mention, uh, you know, we're going to put the best out there. You know, the thing about it, I mean, you know, we've had really good success with, with freshman quarterbacks in the past. I mean, uh, I mean, running backs in the past. I think Michael Dyer was MVP of the national championship game in 2010. So, you know, whoever wins the job, but the good thing is we have very talented guys at that position. And for the most part, all of them are pretty versatile. You know, not just runners, but – but good protectors and can catch a ball in the backfield. And, and, you know, I know just talking to Chad, you know, that's that's what he really likes to do. And, and really, if you look at our league, that's kind of where our league's going. You know, if you look at some of the teams from this past year, kind of what they were doing. So, um, but the good thing is we've got a lot of really good players at that position. Did, that, did this season at all open your eyes a little bit to like what LSU's doing now and obviously what Oklahoma's been doing the last few years? Well, you know, when you talk about our league um, I and mean, what LSU did, I mean, it's one of the best offenses, I guess they're saying in college football. It's very impressive. And you look at what Alabama uh, did this past year with the receivers spreading everything out. And so, you know, if you really look at our league, it's, uh, you know, if you look over a long period of time, and I've been fortunate enough to be in a long time. I mean, you know, there was we were spreading it out way back when. and. There wasn't a whole lot of people now spreading it out. And so, you know, you see the trends going. And, and I think more than anything that, you know, it's coaching, there's a lot of copycatting going on, you know. And so you see teams that are very successful doing the things like at LSU did. you got to assume there's going to be quite a few more other teams. And we're thinking more defensively and offensively. We're going to do our own thing, and Chad will have his own – ideas but you know when I think of that you just got to assume that our defense will see more teams spread it out like you were saying so but offensively you know Chad's going to do what he does and uh, you know I feel really good about his direction. Is it crucial moving forward to have a 1,000 yard running back? I mean you haven't had one in two years but with the way things are transitioning. You know I, I, I you know you just you look I think the best way to answer that is you look at our league over a long period of time and you know, the teams that win championships or have a chance to win the whole thing, they usually have a thousand yard rusher. So that's probably the best way to answer that. Anything else? All right, thank you all.